the session is on finance bill has to be passed vote against it government will fall what's the problem this is not an insurmountable legal issue mother any vote vote against it but what they want is they want to topple the government become the chief minister then tell your lordships now the speaker will decide this is not constitutionally permissible your lordship is absolutely right what time does the government lose majority lose confidence of the house mullahs at the time when it is reduced to a minority at what time does it reduce to a minority when they vote against the government it is reduced that's the solution at the till the time they vote against and the government becomes a minority it's, it's accountable to the people the governor cannot assume that they have lost majority therefore there is no accountability that's not permissible as far as the governor is concerned that's respectfully the responsibility to the query that your lordship raised prime minister nasim rao ran the minority government so it's not as if governments can't be run by minorities point is they don't want to lose the membership of the house so it's a double whammy millers you lose the membership you don't become a minister you to fight an election you may win you may not may not win here you topple the government to become a minister you become a chief minister use the governor's office for that your lordship millers i i don't have to say anything more my political experience and your judicial experience millers we have reduced ourselves to that we are mocked people don't believe us anymore anyway so now we go on to shivraj singh then mala shivraj respondents relied on the law in shivraj to contend that where the governor has reason to believe that the incumbent government does not possess the support of the majority the correct course of action would be for the governor to call upon the chief minister to face the assembly and to establish the majority of the incumbent government within the shortest possible time irrespective of the fact of disqualification well i just read the the the, the highlighted portion distinguished clearly undoubtedly the purpose of entrusting such a function to the governor is not to destabilize an existing government well as i read the beginning as a matter of constitutional law it would not be correct to proceed on the basis that the constitutional authority entrusted to the governor to require the council of ministers to prove their majority on the floor of the house can only be exercised on the very inception after general elections are held and not when the governor has objective reasons to believe that the incumbent government does not command the confidence of the house the governor is not denuded of the power to order a floor test where on the basis of the material available to the governor it becomes evident that the issue as to whether the government commands confidence of the house requires to be assessed on the basis of the floor, of, of a floor test undoubtedly the purpose of entrusting such a function to the governor is not to destabilize an existing government when the satisfaction on the basis of which the governor has ordered a floor test is called into question the decision of the governor is not immune from judicial review the court would be justified in scrutinizing whether the governor prima facie had relevant and germane material to order a floor test to be conducted so we are not against the floor test we are against the considerations on the basis of which the floor test was ordered it is respectfully submitted that shivraj chauhan there are no disqualification petitions now this is the other thing pending against the mlas whose resignation was under consideration a note as noted by the honorable court in para 41 notices of disqualification had been issued against six mlas on 133 but the speaker had accepted the resignation of these six mlas on 143 which i mentioned to your lordships yesterday as regards the other 16 who attended their resignations the speaker had not yet accepted their resignations when the governor directed a floor test to be held the disqualification petitions were not pending against mlas whose resignations were under consideration when the floor test was held on the other hand in the present case governor's decision to direct a floor test to be held on 20 knowing full well that the very mlas of shiv sena legislative party who the governor had recognized are facing disqualification furthermore this honorable court's observation in para 80 the pendency of proceedings before the speaker cannot be a valid basis to not have the confidence of the house in the government determined by the convening of a floor test are premised on the constitutional principle that neither the court nor the governor has any right to impinge on the speaker's power to decide on the issue of disqualification this court cannot say 
that you cannot decide or you I give 10 more days or 10, 15 days. That's not the power. That's not the function of the court. It is trite law that neither the governor nor for that matter this court has the power to impinge upon the authority of the speaker to take a decision on the above issues. Well, that's a... Now five judges have said that. Therefore, Malas, that order on the 27th put us in a situation, Malas, where the government, elected government, was toppled. Neither, again, Malas, neither the governor nor, for that matter, the court can entrench upon the power of the speaker, which is why I pointed out paragraph 6 of the 10th schedule and 180. Because there can't be any hiatus. Speaker's function must continue, and there cannot be any Kitamek order. Then, well, whereas in the present case, the decision to hold the floor test was taken by the governor on 28 6, by which time this honorable court had already interdicted the disqualification proceedings against the respondents on 27 6. The governor, being aware of the pendency of the disqualification petitions and being aware of the fact that this honorable court had extended the period of filing a reply on 2012, could not have disturbed the status quo in the assembly by directing a floor test. Para 82 of this Honorable Court noted, nothing prevents the Speaker from taking a decision either on matters of resignation or of disqualification despite convening the trust vote. Even in Shivraj, your, Chauhan, your Lordship said, because there was no interdiction there. So the Court said in Shivraj Chauhan, the Speaker could easily disqualify. But in this case, what happened? The Speaker could not move. So how does Shivra Chauhan uh, 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 an, an authority for the proposition that, uh, that uh, a floor test is necessary in these circumstances? The illegality of the governor's decision on 28.6 cannot be remedied by subsequent event or actions. The respondents have sought to justify the governor's decision dated so and so by relying on Udav Thakre's resignation on 29.6 instead of facing the floor test. Further, it has been contended that even the votes of 42 MLAs were excluded. We are still through. That's not relevant. Mullahs, when, when Bomai was decided and Mullahs, Bomai set aside orders under Article 356, Mullahs, what did, what did Bomai say? Bomai said, we have to restore the status quo ante. It doesn't matter what happened thereafter. I'll show those mullahs when I come to that. Oh, my said so. Shivra Chauhan also said so. We're not asking your lordship that what Bomai said was the acts that have happened in between can be validated by the court. Right? Because there's legislation that is passed, there are other things that have happened. Those acts will be validated in your final decision making. But we cannot say that we can't have the status quo ante. Status quo ante, if this, that's how Arunachal Maharaj was decided, how it was decided. Only on that basis. Status quo ante was restored. It also happened in Uttarakhand Maharaj, when this court restored the Chief Minister Maharaj, by setting aside the order of, 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 uh, of the governor. <laughs> So we are not saying, Malaj, that everything that happened thereafter is illegal. No, we are saying that's the molding of the relief as and when your lordships decide one way or the other. Anyway, Malaj, I'll just quickly now. Then, then Malaj, kindly come to 46. SR Bomai and Union, the court, while considering the legality of a presidential proclamation under 356 that has been subsequently approved by both houses of parliament, held that an invalid property proclamation would nevertheless have to be set aside. So this argument, well, that is according to an argument of frustration, because you are now saying, look, subsequent events have happened. I am the chief minister. I am enjoying the roots, fruits of power. Please don't do anything. Now there is confidence in me in the house. All irrelevant. Womai says so. Held that an invalid proclamation would nevertheless have to be set aside, thereby recognizing the principle that the legality of an act must be tested on its own terms, and acts consequent thereto cannot give the color of legality to an action which is illegal. I have given the paragraphs, Mullahs. Further, Bomai holds that upon invalidation of the proclamation under 356, the natural consequence is to restore the status quo ante. Court may, however, mold the relief in respect of subsequent acts, but when restoring the status quo ante, the court must restore the Council of Ministers and the Legislative Assembly as they stood on the date of the issuance of the proclamation. Otherwise, the remedy of judicial review would be rendered meaningless. 
how much more eloquent can the court be on this matter? In fact, Bomai goes on to say that holding of fresh elections can also be injuncted on the principle that such a relief is to prevent the frustration of the constitutional remedy. It further goes on to say that the court may be, may be duty bound to give an interim order of this nature to make effective the constitutional remedy of judicial review and to prevent the emasculation of the constitution. Well, what's the point, Millards, of now saying these consequential acts have happened, so you have no judicial remedy, even though the act may be illegal? Additionally, Mullert, um, additionally, it is settled law that the village, uh, let's leave that out, Mullert, we've, uh, so Mullert, para 52, the legality of the governor's decision has to be determined with reference to the decision itself, not by reference to any subsequent events or facts. There is no constitutional basis for the proposition that the otherwise illegal decision of the governor can be justified by referring to subsequent events and actions, including the fact that the petitioner participated in the floor test on the 4th of July. Then governor's decision on 30th of June to swear Eknath Sindhimar. That's the next. It is respectfully submitted that governor does not have the power to invite a leader of a faction of a legislative party acting dehors the political party. But where does the governor get this power from? Who is he, rec who is he recognizing? Leader of what? The governor can only deal with the legislature party. He can't pick out his... Uh, Ekna Sindhi and say, now you become the chief minister. It's like saying that the party is registered with the election commission. The leader is uh, as communicated to the election commission. But I, in, as governor, will pick up another leader contrary to what is, uh, what is communicated to me. The leader continues to be Malat. In the instant case, it is undisputed that on the 30th of June, Udav Thakare was the leader of the Shiv Sena political party. However, the governor extended an invitation to form the government of Sindhe, whose only claim as on 30th June was that he is the leader of the minority faction of the Shiv Sena legislature party. The governor, as on 30th of June, did not and could not have recognized Mr. Shinde as the leader of the Shiv Sena political party. As submitted above, a parliamentary democracy only recognizes alliances between political parties and not an alliance between a political party and a faction of the legislature. Mother, I've already said that. As submitted above, uh, then, therefore, the governor's action of inviting Shinde Malas to form a government illegitimately recognized an alliance between a faction and Shiv Sena Legislative Party and the BJP, which is constitutionally impermissible. The governor's decision is liable to be set aside on this basis. Further, the respondents have failed to deal with the petitioner's reliance on 164.1b, 